Uh, access, uh, access disruption and which one is the chronic disruption? Lovely, thank you. Yep, thank you. I think we can start now. It's time. <laughs> So are you going to share your screen to do that? Are they given an example? Or... Uh, no, they would like you to, to share some example. For them, uh, you know. All right. OK. Um, yes, that's what I'm going to do next. So um, the next few slides are examples. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Thank you. Thank you. OK, everyone back, hopefully. Yep. Yeah. Okay, the, um, the next few slides are, are examples from a range of airlines um, over many years, um, big and small, but also I just want to introduce sort of this idea of well, what exactly do we mean by disruption? Okay. Um, so, Share my screen. Okay, uh, you should be seeing uh, almost the same screen as last time. Okay, um, so airlines, um, and here's some examples that I'm sure many of you may be quite familiar with. Um, examples of, from a customer perspective, what does airline disruption look like and invariably canceled flights or delayed flights uh, and maybe crowded uh, terminal buildings. Um, I guess this is where a customer, what a customer sees when there's a disruption. Um, certainly a disruption to the passenger operations. Um, but it's interesting to reflect that every day you could argue there are disruptions to flights. Um, but when does a normal disruption, a, a typical routine disruption become more than that, become something that we should be planning under a business continuity framework. And interestingly, that was probably one of the first problems I faced when I first took on a role as a business continuity manager at an airline was thinking, well, isn't disruption normal? Don't we have SOPs for that? Don't we have standard operating procedures for disruption? Isn't that what the airport manager is doing? Um, and so it takes a little bit of thinking to do, well, when does just normal disruption, day-to-day -day disruption become more than that, more than what an airline is normally doing? Um, and certainly the, the pick, or oh, the lower picture here with a crowded terminal, if I recall, I think that's Hong Kong, was more than normal. Um, when everything gets stopped, and clearly that is not just a flight delay or flight disruption, aircraft change, it is real significant disruption. And we probably have this all the time. We have uh, weather and uh, nil improvement to weather, uh, therefore we'll operate at 
will operate a different flight um, with different loads until the weather improves. That's just operating an airline, you could argue. And then the other example here, uh, staff sickness, air traffic control, have withdrawn air traffic control tower coverage for a given airport from a certain time of day. This is normal. This is what airlines do. We are constantly fighting these little minor disruptions, incidental, maybe a few hours, maybe a few flights. Um, but when does it become more than that? When does it become a type of disruption that we really have to have a framework, a management framework in place for? So that's the question we, we'll come back to in a moment. Um, we've talked about acute, chronic, business impacts, emergencies, and we have major and we have minor disruptions. Now, an, an obvious one and one example that was given, thank you, um, was a check-in system failure and manual check-in. Uh, but most modern airlines operate with mainframe computers or very significant data centers that are handling far more than just checking and booking engines. They're handling rosters, um, email systems, communica other communication systems, um, maintenance systems. There's enormous amount of activity of an airline that's operated on, through the information technology systems. Um, if we go back about, I don't know, 30 years, then there was a lot of manual processes. We were still using chits and writing on them. Call centers were still picking up the telephone on a landline and talking to people. But slowly over time, all these functions have become automated or converted into software systems, carried by software systems. We don't write chits anymore. Do we even use landlines anymore? Or is it all on cellular? Or is it voice over IP? There is almost to a point where without information technology systems, the airline cannot function. So it was quite interesting to hear that crews were, that uh, check-in staff were able to continue to operate at least some flights using manual check-in. But clearly we're not resourced now. We don't have so many check-in counters. We don't have so many staff um, allocated to, to the point where we can manage the whole airline manually. It isn't, we're so reliant on technology. So clearly anything that disrupts the technology system must now be considered a significant disruption. And there's a few examples coming up. Clearly, there are the, the very worst disruptions, the emergency incidents, loss of aircraft, um, that are firstly an emergency response. Full emergency response process has to kick in. Next of kin passenger manifests um, on the ground teams immediate response teams all have to be activated. And that is very much core of most airlines capability. But following that, there's ongoing chronic impacts, loss of confidence by passengers in the brand, in the airline itself, um, replacing crew, handling the emotional impacts on crew and colleagues. Um, so beyond the emergency, there is at the minimum human human related disruption that goes on for a long time. So here's some just some examples that very easy to find plenty of examples. These are most of these are quite old, but it really doesn't matter. Um, computer glitch delays Delta flights. And it's very easy to find examples 
2000 worst year for aviation ever. Clearly that was a major year. Um, another older one, um, airlines cancel flights after North American blackouts. So if you recall back in 2003, there was a very significant um, power system outage across, I think it was the North East of the United States. One system fell, the next system fell, the next system fell, until a huge area of the country was blacked out. And so without power, you may be able to land aircraft because hopefully the runway lights are backed up, but radars are starting to fail, communication systems are failing, and IT systems are failing. Um, Air Canada system operations temporarily suspended due to primary and secondary power failure. So not only did they have a power failure, but it seems their backup generators failed to start up. Uh, another one, fuel shortage hits Sydney airport. So they couldn't get the fuel through to the airport. And that's a disruption on many airlines. Um, Rats dinner blacks out airport. So clearly a rat must have eaten the power cables and a whole airport has blacked out. Disruption, not only to one airline, but all the airlines operating from that airport, but also the disruption to the schedules. The aircraft are stuck in the wrong place. Crews are in the wrong place. Crews become out of hours. You have to get more crew in. It rolls on and becomes a bigger problem. Uh, Lufthansa, to where's Tokyo Snow Strands 10,000 Narita Airport? So unusual weather conditions beyond what is uh, resourced for. So an air airport that doesn't have runway snow clearing equipment, it suddenly has snow, it can't clear a runway. So further disruption. Computer problem ground, all Delta airline flights. So all of Delta was grounded. Uh, interestingly, I personally experienced two, two of these types of incidents. Fuel shortage at, at Sydney Airport. There was a fuel, fuel outage to the pipeline feed in Auckland Airport when I was involved there. Um, and Air Canada, primary and secondary power. Um, interestingly, as incident, I, I was continually concerned about the diesel backup to a major IT system that was run by IBM on behalf of the airline. And I tried to communicate that problem, um, but I didn't feel there was sufficient reliability or redundancy in the system. Subsequent to me to leaving the airline about a year later, power failed and the generators did not start. And it's exactly what I predicted. Uh, and that was because IBM didn't really understand, they understand technology, but they didn't understand power systems. What's this one? Airline disruptions cast a power over holiday travel. It is interesting how often it seems in the United States anyway, that the airline seem, uh, seem, IT systems seem to fail at Christmas or Thanksgiving when so many travelers are trying to travel. Um, maybe we just hear about it more, but um, one does wonder what effort did these airlines put into understanding how exposed they were to information technology outlets or who was operating the systems for them. I think it's been a more recent, quite well-known one was British Airways, where an IT technician inadvertently switched power off and immediately switched it on again. And of course it disrupted all the memory systems uh, and it took British Airways, I think it was considerable length of time to recover the situation. IT systems are, most companies of all across all sectors, all industries rely on IT now, but airlines in particular, it is very much a real time foundation system for an airline. Um, volcanic ash, that one is. So suddenly 
airports are closed, flights are canceled, and aircraft are damaged. Oh, another volcanic one, SARS, pandemics, fuel supplies, power generators, weather, terrorist incidents or major fires, strikes, maybe a strike of pilots, maybe a strike at an airport, maybe a strike of crew, it might be a strike of support workers, ground crew, uh, damage to aircraft, it's a Singaporean tail strike, which of course puts an air, air, aircraft out of, out of uh, off the line for a long period of time, even if it's at a location where it can repair it. IT systems, yeah. So, so plenty of examples, plenty of ways that an airline can be disrupted. And this is going on to some extent all the time. Um, across the world, airlines are being disrupted for one reason or another. Some events we hear about, others we don't. Um, but I guess the, the important point is to recognize that disruption does happen. It is normal. So we really do need to know how to respond well to disruption if we can continue to service the customers um, properly. And these are probably happening more than we realize. And like I say, most of the smaller ones, we, we sort of, we cope with, we survive and maybe not as well, the response is maybe not as good as it could have been, um, but we recover the situation. However, at times there are very significant disruption events, which we must be able to at least plan for or have some clear idea of how we will respond to them. And clearly we're going through one right at the moment, but it'd be interesting to know if to, to see how many very significant disruptions you can recall. And so the next is another little exercise is whether you can, and here it is, Identify one example of a truly major event that has disrupted aviation over the last 30 years. So it's another little exercise here. And just give us ourselves, I don't know, three or four minutes. You could write down an example of very significant global or large regional um, event that has significantly disrupted the aviation sector. And the next slide, I've, I've got examples, um, uh, but let us see how many people can think what, what, how, how many events have severely disrupted aviation over the last 30 years. Hai cái dụng à, không thấy thì cái MH17 nó bị bắn rơi ở Ukraine đây. Đây là chiến tranh. Không 
đồ à, bán xung đột bán xung đột, à, xung đột. Súng chiếc bán nhà <cười> Jeremy, is it okay if I share uh, the five? Yeah. Yeah. five so yep. Also... Okay. So we got two minutes. <laughs> Um, if you could add another column, of what was the cost of a disruption? Okay, so let me start first. Okay, so uh, I've been with the company for a while, 20 years, so I cannot have anything between the year 21 and the year 30, but I do remember the SARS in 2009. SARS, okay. In December, mm -hmm. And I have uh, facing with the volcano eruption in Europe in April 2010, which uh, stopped most of our flies to and from Europe, mm -hmm. also. so we also faced with uh, November 2011, where a lot of airlines filed for bankruptcy, including uh, American Airlines, Japan Airlines, and uh, Malaysia Airways, and even some airlines uh, run out of business. So that is the most uh, event that affects my uh, business. Okay. Well, so 2011 was, uh, what was the cause of that one? Uh, I, I see that a lot of the airlines filed for bankruptcy. I remember that I have worked with American Airlines and Japan Airlines. And uh, I remember that Malay Airways disappeared. Okay. And I know that a lot of airlines filed for bankruptcy at that moment. Hey, good. Malaysia Vâng ạ, có anh chị nào mình cứ phát biểu I might have had one experience for the In December 2019, I myself traveled from Paris to Peru During traveling a telephone on that day, all the workers of airport went off site So, how to fly long even the first delay was six hours already, and then we stopped. However, when we bought on the aircraft, another delay for four hours because no worker loaded the baggage on the menu. A pattern himself had to load the baggage with after. And when the pattern announced up to the fly, all the passengers on the aircraft might have burst into tears because after so long waiting, that might have been self experience in the Paris Legion. Uh, 
เจ็บแล้วคือบ้านไหนฟังบ้านไหนหมดเป็นหูเป็นหูอ so this is the strap okay uh, anyone any other examples uh, the airlines also uh, they like to do strike in summer uh, in 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 you know, spring so the beginning of the year so european airlines tends to have a lot of strike Okay. So uh, one event about uh, 11 September uh, 2001. That's right. 2001, yeah. yeah. About mm -hmm. the air attack, yeah. Yeah, Twin Towers. Uh, uh, the game hai không không một no uh, attack không tặc à Uh, uh, 2008. You want to remember what happened in 2008? Có những gì xảy ra trong năm 2008 mà uh, yeah, so um, we come up with the idea of the uh, financial crisis. That's right. Yep. Yep. Global financial crisis. Okay. Here's, we've got um, seven examples here. That's good. Um, anyone hazard a guess at how much it costs the aviation industry in each time? Don't worry if you can't. Uh, I've got a. I've got some examples here with, with um, dollar figures put next to them. Millions or billions? It's a Ever. lot of money. A lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Okay. Um. I just. Uh, I my next slide I've got here has actually got some figures on it, which helps illustrate the disruption costs. Okay. Thank you for his examples. Um. Some I've got on my next slide. Um, uh, others, but, uh, I don't, but um, okay. Shall I share my slide? Okay, can everyone see that? Should be able to. Um, these are the examples that are in the IATA guide to um, continuity response. Um, so, and I did say 30 years, which I know is quite a long time now. Uh, but these are the examples I give. Uh, the Gulf, the first Gulf War of 1991, a 30% reduction in international air travel. And the airline losses peaked at 4.8 billion US in 1992. So the following year, that surprised me. I didn't uh, recall it being that disruptive to aviation. The 9-11 attack on the Twin Towers, 
reduced travel demand by 31% in the five months following, and airline revenues from domestic US flights alone fell by 10 billion per year for five years. So it's interesting how long that went on, that impact on the traveling public. But I think it's also worth reflecting that it was this event that led to all that secure, a lot of the security we now have to uh, manage. We have to take into account the time it takes to x-ray passengers and their, their baggage and the costs associated with that. Most of the requirements today are really a result of 9-11 um, the cost of reinforcing cabin doors, new rules about cabin access, all came from that, that event. Um, so the ongoing cost has been truly enormous. Um, SARS pandemic 2003, um, which was, I suppose, the first of a more recent pandemic type events um, it really had an impact. Um, Six billion of revenue losses across global airlines, a Asian airlines, monthly passenger numbers dropped by 35% after the outbreak. Um, that for me was, a. I mentioned earlier that there was an event that taught me a lot. And I think SARS was the one that taught me a lot. Um, I'd been planning for events like earthquakes, power outages, and the, and the like. And then SARS was happening. And so we're in New Zealand, we're flying to Japan, China, we're flying through Hong Kong. Um, and yeah, it was happening. I wasn't really taking a lot of my attention. Um, but then we started getting reports that crews were concerned, were becoming concerned for their own health. Um, and they didn't refuse to fly, but it became quite acute. The union was really concerned. Uh, we have crew who were concerned they might be put at risk. And suddenly for me, it was like, oh, this is a chronic event. This is not an acute event. This is not a sudden event. This has crept up on us. And in fact, it, it, even though we were not entirely exposed to it, we, we took a 12% a impact on revenue at that year. Um, and we did have to start to seriously think about pandemics. And, but most importantly, the idea that some disruptions do not happen suddenly, they happen over a period of time. And it may be a secondary impact. In our case, it was the SARS itself wasn't a risk to us. It was a perception for the crews that they were at risk. So that was interesting. For me, it was a big learning um, event uh, to recognize that disruption can happen in many different ways. And the way you learn about an event uh, can differ. Uh, the other examples they give is the global res uh, recession of 2008, and here's some figures. Um, um, the industry experienced losses similar to the first IRT estimate for COVID-19, 113 billion into present. So that was the estimate for COVID, and that was about the figures that recession caused. 2009, passenger traffic was expected to climb by 3%. First since so it's the first reduction in passenger uh, numbers per, per long period of time. So again, you could say that was a chronic event. It happened over a period of months, loss of confidence, and then banks started to fail. Um, and the advice to all companies was to reduce costs. So we have health. We have terrorist event, we have a war, and we have a financial event. And the last example they give is the volcanic eruption that was mentioned just now, that have affected most of Europe. 
uh, disrupted over, uh, it's actually 10,000 flights, so the comma's in the wrong place. 48% of expected travel and 10 million passengers were stranded during an eight day crisis. Loss of approximately 1.5 to 2.5 billion euros for airlines within a few days. So we have a natural event here, a, a significant natural event, financial event, health, terrorist, and a distant war. Not, not a direct war, a distant war for most, most airlines. So I think that's Excuse quite me, a good- uh, What is uh, exactly the last one in 2010? This was the uh, volcanic eruption in Iceland. Uh, if you recall Iceland, there was a significant disruption and the volcanic ash was blown over your, towards Europe. So the concern was what damage would that do to aircraft engines in flight? Um, and it was known that aircraft have suffered engine outage at, in flight due to volcanic ash. So okay. there was corrosion uh, and erosion effect on engines and no one quite knew what was a safe level. Uh, and also you can get to a point with gases where the engine will actually flame out. So I, I won't pronounce, try to pronounce that name, uh, Icelandic name, but um, yeah, so that was that one. So I think it's a, re, a useful to recognize that disruption being caused by a whole range of external factors and some of the disruption can be very, very significant. Uh, and these examples I think are, are are good examples because they show us that can be caused by a range of reasons. Okay. Um, so the next um, slide was, um, I was going to suggest another exercise, but we've done two exercises now. So I think we'll, we'll skip this one. Uh, and move on to some requirements and guide, guidance that's available to airlines. Uh, this is formal guidance, and formal requirements that are laid down on us as an airline. So first is ACAO. Um, These are statements from ACAO. Aviation is a sensitive industry that requires careful and meticulous planned operations because any direct or indirect disruption could have significant and far reaching adverse effects. And we've seen examples now. Such disruptions can stem from an aircraft, airport, or air navigation emergencies, natural disasters, or other causes, including public health crisis. And the impacts include significant financial, environmental, social, and or material damage, which may have spill over effects to interconnected industries such as tourism and trade. So that last point is quite interesting. Um, what happens to an airline can have a very significant effect to other industries over time if, if it's a long disruption. And it's, it's worth noting that point. So this is for a chaos statement on, on um, planning for disruption. So the next statement, um, and I've highlighted in red um, some key points, appropriate immediate and coordinated actions in response to emergencies and disruptions. So this is interesting. I think we all know that a care requires us to have emergency response systems in place for aircraft accidents, but it also requires us to have in place the ability to handle disruption. So to emergencies and disruptions can be significantly mitigated, can sufficiently mitigate the severity of the impacts. So if we have coordinated, timely, immediate, timely, coordinated, responses, we can significantly mitigate or reduce the severity of the impacts. 
It is therefore critical that stakeholders involved in the air transport operations have in place emergency response. As I've said, we, we know we've got to have emergency response plans, but also continuity plans. So ERP, emergency response plan, to ensure a rapid response and swift resolution and return to operations. I think that's important to recognize what we're saying is, yes, we have to have emergency response, but we also have to have contingency plans to return to normal operations as soon as we can. And I think that recognizes the importance of aviation to in the global connectivity. An emergency response plan, they have used that term, is a comprehensive operational level document outlining specific roles, sets of actions and time frames to respond to unexpected situations, disruptions or potential disruptions. So that's interesting, they use the term potential disruptions. So I think the SARS one for me was my uh, learning for potential disruption. The crew had started to express a concern, but there hadn't been as yet a direct impact on our airline. But clearly there was a potential for disruption. And like I say, for me, that was a really important lesson. Um, and it's interesting to see that a KO make particular reference to potential disruptions. So it's being aware, not just of the immediate effects, but also what may be occurring, may evolve. If a war starts, I don't know, Ukraine, for example, now. So what effect will it have on air transport? It's worth asking these questions or having people roles that uh, with for people to ask these questions. So we are pre-prepared. That's the same one, sorry. So this is another statement in the KO. In addition to emergency response and contingency plans, operators are encouraged to develop business continuity plans, which be go beyond the immediate mitigation plans for unplanned incidents. The objective of BCPs, so business continuity plans, is to build and improve organizational resilience and the capability to recover quickly and effectively from any local, regional, or global disruption. So I think this is very comprehensive requirements, Mikeo. The team of, who drafted this, I think they, they really understood, probably from experience in some cases, what was required of airlines. So K have published um, SARPs for the safety, efficiency, and regularity of international aviation to address the necessity and importance of emergency response planning and coordination for various stakeholders in the aviation system. So they're using the term emergency response planning, but as you can see previously, they see it as more of an emergency, essentially any type of crisis. Other international organizations include the Airports Council International, International Air Transport Association, ICARA, and the Civil Air Navigation Services organizations have also published documents and manuals with guidance and best practices to support their respective stakeholders in establishing emergency response and contingency plans. So what's that, what that is telling us is that Airports must have business continuity plans. Air navigation service providers, air traffic control, air traffic services must have business continuity plans. And also airlines and those organizations that support airlines, ground handlers, engineering, etc. Every stakeholder in the aviation system is expected to consider and plan for disruption. Uh, 
Um, next slide. So IATA has published SARPs um, to address the necessity and importance of emergency response planning and coordination of various stakeholders for the aviation system. So these are included in a whole range of annexes. I think they slightly overstate this, but they have mainly for emergencies. Um, I've seen less material for contingency planning, but there is reference to it. And the next few slides lists for his annexes. So the first annex is annex one is personal licensing. There's no particular specific chapter on the subject, but different parts of the annex describe necessity for personnel to have knowledge and or experience of emergency procedures, most often pertaining to technical and operational emergencies. So that's really focused really on an emergency situation rather than a, a broader business um, in, uh, disruption. Annex 19 and Annex 2, safety management systems. That requires coordination of emergency response planning. It says the service provider is required to establish and maintain an emergency response plan for accidents and incidents in aircraft operations and other aviation emergencies shall ensure that the emergency response plan is properly coordinated with the emergency response plans of voice organization that must interface with during the provision of products and services. So what that is saying is our planning must also consider who we work with. So it may be ground handlers, it may be the airports, um, it may be uh, power supply companies, for example. We've, we should be thinking about working with them on our emergency response and co and business response plans. Recognize we're all interconnected. Um, IART itself has guidance on, um, on business continued planning. Um, organization and management emergency response structure for air carriers. And they have a range of uh, communicate or requirements. This is really mainly on aircraft emergencies, but it's useful to go through some of the points I raised. So they have a response manual. And in it, the next chapter, they talk about command and control. And I'll come back to this command and control in, the, in a short while, I'll explain why, why I'm stepping through these. A requirement for telephone inquiry centers. So a lot of the sort of disruptions we we may encounter can affect passengers, either disrupt their travel or cause concern to people. And so we have to be able to respond to that. Um, there could be events where the airline edge actually required to assist in humanitarian responses. So that's a slightly different aspect. They do talk about go teams, which is sending teams to an incident, but again, that's mainly focused on emergency, aircraft emergencies. Crisis communications, that's a really important point, not only telephone centers, but how do you communicate with your, your customers and the public in general after an incident? And that's an interesting area because with social media, um, and just the pace of communications now, that I think has become a much more complex problem. In the past, you could sort of take charge of the communications. You say, we will issue a press release. We'll make an announcement on radio. We will tell people essentially what we want them to know about. Um, but now that's changed. Everyone's got a camera in their, in their pocket. Communications is instant, and really we don't now, we don't have a luxury of being able to directly manage all communications. So if there is an incident, people 
you may hear about it through social media before when you hear about it through the own airlines communication system. So that has really changed the way that we must manage incidents. We have to recognize we're no longer in of fully in control of the messages or the information that the public are seeing. Not just the public, but other, other stakeholders. So certainly it's become a bigger problem. Um, emergency response drills and exercises. What it's saying is you should exercise response plans. Um, and indeed, I would argue that is essential. If your plans are not to be simply documents sitting on a shelf, that someone might remember there was one, but I've never read it. Is it going to work? And also another point may raise is the need for mutual assistance agreements, e, i.e. seeking support from other airlines or agencies to help respond to incidents. The most obvious is carrying other people's passengers if an airline has a problem to try and keep things moving. And there's many examples of that where other airlines have stepped in to help clear passenger backlogs. Okay, um, the next couple of slides, I've, I was hesitant to put this one in, but I have just for completeness so you're aware. There is an international standard on security and resilience business continuity management systems requirements, quite a long title. As um, international standard ISO 22301. And it's a relatively new one. Um, now, I personally haven't used this partly because it's new. Um, so I did research it a little bit. And um, it specifies requirements to plan, establish, implement, operate, monitor, review, maintain, and continually improve a documented management system to take against, reduce the likelihood of occurrence prepare for, respond to, and recover from disruptive events when they arise. Now that struck me as quite a mouthful, quite a wide scope. So I looked at um, what that entailed. And in fact, they've issued two, three, four, five, six, seven standards on business continuity planning. And apparently you can be certified against these. Now, I find it quite interesting. Um, there's a first one that um, is, it seems to be the top document and sets the technical specifications. The next one on how to use the standard. The next on how to carry out an impact analysis. The next to consider your supply chains. The next on people. The next on strategy. And we're next on how to write plans and procedures. Now, in my mind, this is getting too complicated <laughs> or too onerous. Um, it, my own lessons from my own experience is you have to keep it simple because when something goes wrong, everyone is stressed. Everyone's trying to handle a lot of information everyone is trying to make decisions. And the last thing you need is a complex plan, but people can't remember what they're meant to be doing. Not sure where it's written down, not sure it's up to date. So I think my own view of this is, this is probably too complicated, um, too onerous, but there's some good material, good ideas in it. Um, and I personally, for example that I've used is the Australian standard. It's called 5050 because it, it's more focused on what are you trying to achieve. You identify your risks and you mitigate your risks. So for me, that's a more practical, a more pragmatic, if you understand the difference, um, approach to business continuity planning. 
Okay. Um, so 20 minutes left. Um, I think we will do another exercise. Now, with that all in mind, um, and some of the examples we've talked about, um, what I'd like to do is another little exercise to see how broadly we can think about disruption. So we've had some quite obvious ones so far. We've had the pandemic, obviously. We've had IT outage, IT disruption, a continue, um, check in counters. Um, and there's been a few other examples, but there's a whole range of other disruptions that we need to be thinking about. So I'd like if everyone could spend five minutes thinking about other causes of disruption and try and think very broadly, minor disruptions and, and significant disruptions. And to do that, that's just for your own part of the business. Can you ask yourself in your mind, what do I need to continue my part of a business? What are the services, information, et cetera, that I need to do my part of a business? Because that's the key, key question that we'll be asking ourselves later. What do you need to carry out your part of the business? That's a really good question, simple question to ask yourself. Um, and think through all the things that could stop that supply either the supply to you or what you supply to someone else. Think about what could stop that happening. And then we'll go around the room again. Tức là chúng ta phải làm gì để mà uh, có thể phát triển cái doanh nghiệp một cách bền vững và cái thứ hai nữa là uh, các anh chị suy nghĩ về tất cả những cái 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 sự kiện mà làm mà khiến cho cái sự uh, khiến cho cái sự phát triển của nó gián đoạn nó không thể phát triển được đấy là hai câu hỏi chính mà mọi người sẽ phải đặt đặt ra câu hai là gì câu hai là các nguyên nhân các nguyên nhân so I just put a bad question nhân viên so what is the cause and what is the effect on your part of a business what would cause a problem and what effect will it have on you dịch bệnh do là con người thì thầy cũng muốn là mọi người nghĩ rộng hơn ra xem là ngoài những cái vấn đề đấy thì chúng ta sẽ có những cái vấn đề nào khác. Okay, five minutes. Yeah, thank you. Năm phút ạ. Thank you. <cười> Nguyên nhân 
chị cứ cứ cứ, cứ bên tôi mọi người có thể là biết cất trong nhóm mà ở đây lớp mình, mình nói đây và cái lớp mình cũng suy nghĩ vào để xem là những cái gì Okay, shall we try some? Uh, just two more time. Who wants to start? So, <laughs> so a sudden event, a uh, acute situation. So I think one of the cause uh, will be supply chain disruption. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yep. Because uh, um, through, uh, of course, it's, it's the effects of uh, many things external, but uh, supply chain is really important for the airline industry as well. Um, it has been disrupted since of the, for example, like uh, the effects will cause delays in goods and and this will increase the cost of the transport sir. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the cost will be depends on, on you know the um, pandemic, the policy, the kind of uh, cost as well, and the stakeholders, for example. Yeah. Um, any other examples of cause the supply chain? Um, are you thinking of products or? Can you give an example of a supply? Mm. Like a spare part in an uh, airplane. Mm -hmm. Because the uh, last time I remember that uh, we have one plane uh, uh, lying in Europe because we don't have spare parts, but, uh, so we have to ship them from Vietnam to Europe. So mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Airplanes to come here. Okay, um, so the effect on this effect on Vietnam Airlines on the end, um, cost of delay, yeah, passenger disruption. Can I suggest? Uh, I Cargo. Was any of the um, cargo time dependent? Was it food or could you have lost? Could the cargo have lost been lost? Okay, thank you. Interesting one. Uh, anyone else? So also, I think that we have a lot of uh, uh, IT issue with the with the uh, in the business. For example, we have uh, uh, the, the system down when we do the check-in, or sometimes the server system also down. So not only the check-in, but maybe the whole system. The mm -hmm. So especially, I think uh, a few years ago, we have the system down in the uh, traditional uh, lunar New Year holiday. So a lot of passengers get frustrated in the, at the airport, and uh, there was nearly a fight over there. Mm -hmm. Always seems to happen on a holiday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And well, of course. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and the post, uh, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> All the journalists that they cannot do check in or they do not receive the passenger list. Um, okay, this is interesting. Uh, the cause, um, so you don't know, it's probably a very technical cause. We, we don't know the details. It's useful to know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there was a report that the Sabre system was down because we used Sabre. And the impact was? The fact that uh, a passenger cannot do the check-in or the flight delay. And uh, the passenger are not happy. Also, our, mm -hmm. our uh, um, check-in person at airport are not happy because they have to handle with a lot of passengers. Yeah. yeah. And there was no solution. They have to wait until uh, everything was fixed, and no one know when this will be fixed. They can put on waiting if they know when the problem is fixed. It's better than to just keep them waiting with no dead end, with, with no deadline. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone got any other parts of the business? Got an example? Yes, uh, we are uh, Thì nào có, có các cái uh, ý kiến khác không ạ? Do you count the weather? Because we do have frog and uh, uh, storm. Yesterday we have a big storm that we have to cancel a lot of uh, uh, flights, domestic, domestic flights. Mm -hmm. So for this occasion, uh, the Vietnam Airlines also have to cover the cost of the delay, for example, hotel costs, passenger costs, 
that kind of thing. Yeah. Food and beverage as well. So there's a lot of money to cover. Yeah. I know how I'm Okay. Okay. Any others before we break for lunch? I've got a little list here of some others to to add, but we can do that after lunch. Any of us? There's some good selection there, but um, there's some obvious ones missing still, I think. No other. Stop on us now. Sorry, I missed that. You say we stop our lunch now. So. That's what I'm suggesting. If there's no more ideas, but I've got a little list of some extra ones that I'm going to suggest after lunch. Yep. Okay. Radio. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, we'll we'll come back to that immediately after lunch. Uh, I understand it is lunch until one thirty. Let's go. One. Yeah. One thirty. One thirty. Yeah. One thirty. Okay, thank you everyone. Enjoy lunch. Enjoy your lunch. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you. Bye, Chichi. Thank you.